Hey guys, 420 seeing here. Real quick, join our Discord. It's free, and the link is going to be in the pinned comment and description down below. And of course, drop that like on the video, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos. Real quick, if you want to hang out with me on a more chill yet unfiltered setting and want to get in our C Vault giveaway, follow and subscribe to us over on Twitch at Rad Scene. I've been playing a lot of Black Ops 7 Zombies, and we're launching our first ever Arc Raiders stream on Monday. And if you have Amazon Prime and want to show further support at no cost, drop your free Twitch Prime subscription during my next live stream and you'll never get any more ads on Twitch. So again, I mean it's free. You can't beat free. We go live Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, so I'll see you there. Today's video is sponsored by Spider Farmer. They have lights, tents, their super dope GDS smart controller, humidifier. They got watering systems. I mean, Spider Farmer's got you covered, so check them out. Link is going to be down below in the description and at the pinned comment as well. You might have to expand the pin comment. This is also going to be the last day to take advantage of the Cyber Monday sale where you get 10% off your first order, so definitely check them out. Today we're going to be going over pH, and this isn't going to be a debate over whether you should be pHing your water or not. This is more of getting an understanding of how pH directly affects your grow and the results that you're going to be getting out of your run. So like me personally, I'm a fan of pHing my water. I get why people don't pH, but the moment you get a zinc or iron deficiency, hey, you'll at least know why. The whole point of getting Getting your pH down is so that way your plants can absorb all the nutrients you're giving them. So your pH has to stay within a certain level or else you're going to be in a situation where you give your plants nutrition and you'll end up getting deficiencies and you'll end up just kind of wondering why, even though you've given them what they need, it's because they're not uptaking that stuff. So that that's why you're getting the deficiencies. Then you're going to think that you didn't give enough of them, then you got to give them more and then it, you're still going to be locked out and it's just the whole thing. So and that's why pH is so important. So like when you're at around 6.5, right? Most of your nutrients are going to be available, so that way your roots can absorb it. But as you water, your pH levels are going to rise. And then your plants aren't going to have access to that iron or zinc, like I mentioned before, and copper as well, I believe. And manganese, that's one a lot of people do forget. Not magnesium, but manganese, okay? Now, 6.0 has always been my golden standard. I've said that from the get-go. I think I will always be like between 5.8 and 6.3, 6.4, somewhere around there. So keeping it as close 6.0 as possible, you're not going to have any issues with nutrient availability or just not letting them get that nutrients. If you're looking for more vigorous growth, you'll never want to be in a position where your plants won't uptake all the nutrients that you're giving them because essentially you're wasting your time and your money. So if you're constantly getting vigorous growth due to your plants, getting all the nutrition you're supposed to be giving them, it's going to pay off when it comes time to harvest. So here's the problem when your pH is too low. This usually is never the problem, but I'm still going to cover it anyway. It's always when your pH levels are too high, which obviously is a problem as well. But I still want to go over both of them just so we're kind of you know we got full coverage on this video all right if you're sitting too acidic you can get some leaf discoloration twisted leaves and a lot of browning action going on no bueno now when your ph levels are too high which is what most people have issues with if you're gonna have a ph issue you could get stunted leaves which means that they're not going to grow as big as they normally would we're talking about like the fan leaves so like you ever see plants from people that the fan leaves they just look kind of small they're not as big as they should i know some of it has to do with genetical traits of course but a lot of it has to do with your ph levels just not sitting where they need to be so that's where stunted development is going to be happening hey nutrient lockout is also something else you could encounter when your ph levels aren't where they need to be you know like a lot of people who grow organically don't like the ph me personally i don't fall under that category i want to be in control of the grow and not rely on the microbes buffering out but a lot of you also it also has to do with the quality of your water right so if your water is super alkaline line hitting about we're talking about like nine like 8.5 9 9.5 shit like that there's no way that you're going to be able to just not ph your water you can't you know what i mean like you can't expect your microbes to buffer out your water's ph when you're clocking it at nine and you'll have to get it all the way down to six hey that's that's a long way down you know what i'm saying now reverse osmosis completely different ball game that's different the average ph when you're watering with reverse osmosis is usually on average about 6.0 to 6.5 because the filtration process, it removes the minerals that's gonna naturally increase your pH levels. Now, if you've never had an RO system, I know if you're a beginner, you, there's a good chance that you've never had an RO system. On average, I know prices may vary, but you're looking at about $250, and it's really not that hard to hook up onto your sink. So if you do have an RO system, you don't have to pH your water because your pH levels are already gonna be sitting pretty close to where it needs to be, like 6.0, 6.5 on average. So 
I would be comfortable telling you guys that your microbes will buff it out since you're only really tweaking it, you know what I'm saying? Since it's already pretty close to where it needs to be anyway. But if you're growing tap water, you got a high pH level, then I would absolutely pH your water. So it really depends on the quality of your water. And you have to do some research on your town's water and get an RO system if you need it. So that way you don't need to pH and it'll just make life a little bit easier. Now, back when I started this whole thing, maybe like 2012, 2013, we had well water. And from what I remember, well water was pretty neutral for me. It, it was hitting between like, like 6.8, 7.2. So if you're running well water, I am still comfortable telling you guys that if you're like within a point of like six, like if you're if your water is hitting between like 6.0 all the way to maybe like seven, seven point two tops, then I would say you're gonna be good to go. But you know, if you're hitting 8.5, 9, like the water that I've always had to work with, like with tap water in the past, it was always kind of hitting like 8.5, 8.7, 9, 9.5 at one point. So if you're in that kind of a situation, then it just makes complete sense to pH. Now, as far as growing hydroponically, I can't give you an answer because I've only done organic soil runs. And I know some of you have been asking, would I ever do hydro? And the answer is most likely not because I'm not a big fan of something that's been working successfully for you. You know, why change it just to grow a different way and pretty much get the same result. I know people are gonna argue that. Listen, I said what I said, all right? That's just me. You guys can do whatever you want and hey, I'll do whatever I feel is best for me. But I would rather be honest with you and not feed you a whole bunch of bullshit because there's enough of that on the internet. Kind of like people saying that green spectrum doesn't do anything for your plants. Yo, that's crazy work right there, crazy work. Now the other question people ask is how could you pH down your water when you're running organically? Would that kill the microbial activity? The short answer is yes, but you could always add recharge and fish it and you'll be good. All I can tell you is from the past runs that I, you know, where I would have to pH down my water, my plants would always respond in a positive way after hitting them with recharge and fish it as opposed to just not hitting them. So. Honestly, it's really up to you. If you want to see the results of my past runs, just scroll through the videos or check out the harvest playlist and you'll see all the past runs that I did. Hey, my flowers in the past, they've always developed beautifully. So proof is in the pudding. Those of you that are asking, where's my grow? I hope you guys don't take this the wrong way. I'm currently not growing, but we do have a playlist for multiple runs and I don't really need to prove anything to anybody anymore because the proof is already there. You know, I'm here to teach you guys how to grow. So anyone that asks, where's my grow? You're just wasting your time because then my wife's gonna end up deleting it and you know, I'm not even gonna see it anyway. You know what I mean? So just refer to the harvest playlist if you need you know, if you need have some kind of validation or confirmation that I know how to grow, we got the we got a whole bunch of harvest. We got the apple Betty. We got the black cherry bliss. We have, I have a whole bunch of videos. So be sure to either, if you're in the video section, scroll all the way down. You're going to see all of those harvest videos, or you could just look for the harvest playlist. I think I still have that up. I'm going to be putting it up uh, tonight, which is the night before you guys see this video. If there's anything else you want to add to this discussion about your water's pH levels, drop it in the comment section below. So having said that, before I close off today's video, be sure to join our new Discord and Twitch. And to everyone else, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. And also, don't forget to follow us on Twitch at Rad Scene. It's not the 420 scene anymore. I had to change it because EA and Xbox, it kept popping me. At the very least, if you join our Discord, I'm going to have notifications every time we go live. Every single day, we're going to have notifications on the Twitch server and on the general server. So be sure to follow us over on Discord and we'll get you all hooked up. And I hope everyone has a great rest of the day. And as always, stay safe. Peace, guys.